So I'm Liz. I guess I could. You guys all know me. Um, I'm super excited to show share this with you guys and um, a little bit about Safe Start, our organization. Just so you know, um, we are a federal nonprofit. So um, our focus is is educating everybody, um, including doctors and nurses, on safe sleep and bringing awareness to sudden infant death. And providing emotional support to people that have experienced like pregnancy, infant, or child loss. Um, also, we have a new program, our car seat program, where we help families learn how to install their car seats correctly and um, provide a car seat to them if they have one. So that's pretty cool. Um, so as you guys know, there's a lot of misinformation out on the internet. Um, and you can basically find whatever answer to any question that you want on the internet, but you have to make sure that it's a it's a good source, it's a valid source, it's true information, and I'm sure you guys have all learned about that in class when you're doing your research papers and stuff. But um, so you know, the information that we teach um, is is the best of the best. So the information comes from the American Academy of Pediatrics. The Center for Disease Control, or the CDC, who you guys have been hearing a lot about lately, and then the National Institute of Health and Human Development. So um, this is the best of the best information. This is the information that the doctors recommend um, to their families that they serve. So you can be super confident that this information um, is up to date um, and the best information that we can give you. So. Um, okay, so why are we doing this class? Um, it's to make sure that you guys know um, how to keep the babies that you watch safe and um, free from injury or even um, from dying. Um, our, we, in the United States, we get about 3,600 deaths a year from sudden unexpected infant death. So those, um, and so that means a baby that's 12 months or younger, they die from an, either sudden infant death syndrome or an accidental death like um, strangulation from a blanket or suffocation from a blanket or um, getting rolled on top of because they were sleeping maybe on a couch or a bed with an adult. So we know that we can prevent most of these accidents. And um, it's with education and um, by following the ABCs of safe sleep. So that's what I want to go over with you guys um, today. So does anybody have any questions on that? Um, you guys, all, I'm kind of looking at your faces, so you're good? Okay. All right. So we're going to go over the ABCs of safe sleep so you can keep those babies safe when you are watching them. And these recommendations, you guys, before I forget, is all the way through baby's first birthday that these recommendations need to be followed, okay? Um, look at that baby, it's currently here, so cute. Um, okay, so that's the why. So A stands for alone, babies need to sleep just like this little guy right here, alone in their own crib. So we don't want to um, sleep with the babies, so, um, Maybe I I can remember um, maybe putting a baby down on a couch for a nap or sleeping with them or putting them next to them and that can be really dangerous because um, you know you might roll on to them um, and accidentally you know if you're sleeping you might accidentally smush them um, and they can't breathe so they need to be in their bed just like this little guy here okay um, okay. So sometimes um, co-bedding, this means when maybe a sibling sleeps with a baby or even twins um, sleep next to each other. And what can happen here is kind of the same thing with bed sharing, right? So maybe this little guy accidentally rolls on top of this guy um, and same thing with an adult. And I remember when Emma and Isadora were twins, they slept together. They slept, as infants, they slept in the same crib. And so now we know, that was 14 years ago, but now we know that can be really dangerous because one baby might roll on top of the other 
in, then that other baby can't breathe. So, so make sure that all babies are sleeping, you know, in their own, their own crib. Okay. We used to, it used to be pretty common. It used to be very common to co-bed um, babies. Okay. So alone also means no pets, no toys, no pillows. Um, I mean, a pillow can be a suffocation hazard. It can get up over their face. Toys, even, you know, the toys that you can see in this crib, they could totally be a suffocation hazard. Even if, like a choke. Um, all right. So do you guys know what crib bumpers are? I teach a class at Venture High School, and the whole class looked at me when I said, oh, I stay away from crib bumpers, and they all looked at me like, I, d I don't know what a crib bumper is. So. If you guys give me a thumbs up if you know what one is. Okay, all right. So what a crib bumper is, is, okay, you can kind of see it right here. This isn't the best picture. I'm going to try and get another different picture for this. But it, so on a traditional crib, right, this, it's like a padding that lines the inside of a crib. And we used to use these, like, when I was a baby, they came out because the slats on cribs, let me show you. So see these slats right here? They were really far apart and babies' heads would get stuck and even their bodies, and they were getting really injured, even dying. So instead of putting slats closer together and building cribs safer, um, which we do now, they invented this crib bumper that lines the inside of a crib. And um, it can be, it's just like a pillow. Right, so babies can roll into it, they can suffocate. This baby got her head on the wrong side of the crib bumper. Um, so this is, can be like a strangulation hazard also. So making sure when you're putting that baby down in their crib that if you see crib bumpers, that um, talk to the parents about taking those off or um, maybe just taking them off yourself and then um, you know talk to the parents when they get home because really they probably don't know how dangerous that they are. Um, in fact, there's two states right now um, that don't even, that it's illegal to even sell these because they're so dangerous. Okay, so blankets, um, you have to be, um, the recommendation is to not use any blankets at all with a sleeping baby, okay? They want, what, they, what the American Academy of Pediatrics wants you to do um, is to monitor the room temperature or use a sleep sack. Um, the issue, which we're going to get to in a sec, but the issue with blankets are it can be a strangulation hazard, they can be a suffocation hazard, um, and an overheating hazard because we have to be really careful with babies um, to not overheat. Just because they're little doesn't mean they need two blankets or more than we would need. They need maybe um, just what we would need to stay comfortable. Uh, so you have to be careful not to overheat a baby. Um, just because they're little doesn't mean they need extra layers. So the recommendation for the room temperature, because I know I remember I used to crank up the heat because I thought babies would get cold easier than me, um, but they want the room temperature um, 65 to 72 degrees. So we don't want to crank up the room temperature just because the baby's little, okay? Because they can overheat and when a baby overheats, they just stop breathing. So, um, so we got to stay away from blankets. So what do we do? So we can't use blankets. So what should we use? Um, we can use a sleep sack, which is a wearable blanket. Um, and this re is, a wearable blanket. So we use this, and so this, right, so this sleep sack won't be a strangulation hazard, it won't overheat the baby, it won't get wrapped up, um, or it won't get over the face. So, but if the family doesn't have a sleep sack, you can just put them down in, you know, like the clothes that they're wearing, if it's during the day, or um, jammies at night, and they'll be totally fine. So they just recommend not using a blanket, okay? So monitor the room temperature, making sure it's not too hot, and then you don't have to use a blanket or use a sleep sack. So I wanted to show you guys, I have my sleep sack, though. So um, 
this baby has a sleep sack on. This is actually the preemie size um, because it's a doll, so it fits better. Um, and it actually has this little swaddle piece attached to it um, that some babies might use, um, which, is, which is fine. Um, but this sleep sack is a wearable blanket, and it's pretty cute. It zips from the bottom. Let's see if I can see. See? And then you can change your diaper without having to pull the undress them. So they're super nice. But have you guys seen sleep sacks? Have you used them before? Yeah, Gabby, yep. Yeah. Yeah, Susie, no, Mackenzie, yeah, okay. So um, they're pretty nice, um, but but again, if the family doesn't have them, you can totally just put them down without without blankets, okay? All right, let's see. Sleep sex, so no blankets. So baby sleep alone, and guess what the B is for? On their back. <laughs> Isn't this a cute picture? Um, okay, so this baby's sleeping on his back. Um, you always want to put babies down for, for naps and at nighttime onto their back, okay? The reason is, is because we have, um, we have to keep their airways nice and open. See, um, you kind of think about the diameter of a straw as the diameter of an airway for, an, for a baby. So when they're laying flat on their backs on a flat, firm surface, their airways are nice and open, um, okay? And then we're going to talk about incline sleep in a minute. So, so tummy sleeping, um, the, the issue with tummy sleeping is um, it can be dangerous. Uh, their faces, see their faces right near the mattress, and um, they can also overheat more easily. Um, so we want to make sure that our babies are sleeping on their backs. But there is a time when um, babies can sleep on their tummies um, or do you guys know when that might be? I'm going to unmute you all, so maybe if I can figure it out. Hmm. What do you guys think? When can a baby um, sleep on their tummy, or can they? What do you think? Isn't it when they can roll over? Yep. So. Babies are allowed to sleep on their tummies only if they can roll front to back, so from their tummy to their back and from their back to their tummy, okay? So if they're not rolling yet, they're not allowed to sleep on their tummy, okay? Because what happens, if they're not strong enough to roll over, they're definitely not strong enough to push their face out of the mattress and turn it to the side to sleep, okay? so. Um, there is a time when um, a baby can sleep um, on its, so there is a time when a baby can roll just one way, usually it's back to front first, so if you're, if that baby's, and this is something you're going to have to ask the parents, okay, um, so if that baby's only rolling one way, if you see that they've rolled onto their tummy during sleep, then roll them onto their back, does that make sense? Okay, so that's a really important question to ask your ask the parents is well, does your baby, you know, is your baby rolling both ways? And if they say yes, then you you always start them on their back, no matter what, in, in an empty crib, right? But you, that's a question you definitely should ask the parents. Okay, is are they is is the baby rolling it? And then that's going to help you determine um, the safe sleep answer, okay, and how you're going to sleep those babies. Does so anybody have any questions on that? You guys are good? Okay. All right. Okay. So incline sleep, this is important. Um, so it's really important um, before the parents leave that they show you the crib or the bassinet or wherever the baby's going to sleep. Okay. If, you, if they're like, oh, they can sleep in a swing or a bouncy seat or any sort of something that inclines the baby's head like this picture we it's important to know that this is a dangerous sleep position okay um then ask maybe if they have a crib instead um that you can put the baby to sleep in because what happens here when a baby's head is above their feet 
Um, if in even in a device like this, they can roll into the fabric on the side or right here. See how that head is? Um, it's called chin to chest, and it pinches off their airways. Here's this slide again. So what happens when a baby's sleeping at an incline? Their head, their chin can touch their chest and pinch off their airways, just like you can see in here. Remember the um, plot on their backs? Their airway goes is straight and open, but when they sleep on an incline it can pinch their airways. Um, babies' heads are really big and heavy, and babies don't have really strong neck muscles. So it's very easy for when they sleep on an incline for their chin to go to their chest and pinch off their airways, and then they can't breathe, okay? So a flat, firm surface is, is what these babies need. So make sure that you're talking to parents, you're asking parents, so show me where a baby sleeps, and if it's any sort of an incline, ask if they have something that um, lies flat, okay, to keep their airways open. Okay, so I'm going to show you this quick little video, and um, it shows um, some, some people are concerned that a baby might, if they're sleeping on their back and they spit up, that they might choke. So I always talk about this in my class. Okay, so what are you guys supposed to do? If you have a friend that's been drinking and they pass out, what do you, how are you supposed to lie them? You're supposed to reposition them. Do you guys know this? What are you supposed to do? Who knows? Okay, you're supposed to turn them on their side in case they vomit. So they don't choke on their vomit. Okay? So you're supposed to lie them on their side. It's a, it's a first aid thing. And you're supposed to lie them on their side so when they throw up, it'll go out, and they won't choke on it. But babies are different, okay? So a baby's um, an intoxicated person is different than a sleeping infant, okay? Um, so infants need, um, they will turn their heads if they want, if they have to spit up when they're sleeping on their backs, okay? An intoxicated adult who's passed out will not, okay? So um, I wanna show you this little video um, of why babies don't choke um, when they spit up while sleeping on their backs. And I hope, I'm pretty sure you can all hear this. Hi, my name is Gail Bagwell and I am an advanced practice nurse here at Nationwide Children's Hospital and I'm going to talk to you today about why babies don't choke when lying on their backs. When a baby is ready to go to bed, you want to put them in a safety approved crib on their backs. Nothing should be in the crib. You should have a nice fitted mattress, um, fitted sheet on your mattress, as well as no bumper pads and no toys or other stuff in the baby's crib. The baby needs to go onto the back because the American Academy of Pediatrics has found that by placing the babies on their backs, there's a less incidence of the baby dying from sudden infant death syndrome or other sleep-related deaths. A lot of people will ask, but won't my baby choke if they're laying on their back? and they start to vomit and the answer is actually no they will not when your baby sleeps on his back the air pipe which is also known as the trachea lies on top of the food pipe which is known as the esophagus while on the back if your baby spits up it is harder for the spit up to go into the air pipe due to gravity however when your baby sleeps on his stomach and spits up it is easier for him to choke because the spit up will gather at the back of the throat and can go right into the air pipe causing the baby to breathe the spit up and to their lungs. So it is always best to put your baby on their back to sleep for all sleeps, nap time and bedtime. Okay. So in a nutshell, what that was saying is if a baby is sleeping on its tummy and it spits up, it can breathe it back into their lungs and asphyxiate is what it's called. So um, we always, again, want to put babies to sleep on their backs. Um, do you guys have any questions about that video? It was pretty clear. Okay. Zadora, are you good? I got a delay here. Okay, all right. So babies sleep alone on the backs and in a crib. And there goes the video again. Okay. So C is for crib. We want babies to sleep in a safety approved crib. So again, this goes with 
um, the whole, you know, we don't want them sleeping in swings or bouncy seats or any sort of device that puts them in an incline. Or car seats, by the way. Car seats, um, once, I'm going to talk about car seats really quick because I forgot to put this in here. So a car seat, right, that's incline sleep, okay? But we have to buckle our babies in when we're driving. It's the law, okay? So, but once you get to where they're, where you're going, baby needs to come out and be put in their bassinet or pack and play or crib, okay? So we don't want to ever let them sleep in their car seats because chin to chest once again, okay? So, or car seats. I forgot to add that part. Okay. All right. So what do, where do we want babies to sleep? We want them to sleep in a crib, the flat firm surface, a bassinet, Okay, this is made for little babies. So um, if babies are rolling, um, they're too big for these bassinets. So that's just a little, that's a little sleep area. Um, or the pack and plays, which uh, we love. These have a nice firm surface and they're small, and they're portable, they can go with you. Um, this is the three places that's safe for a baby to sleep. Okay, there's not very many other places. Whoa, sorry, my, the wind just blew my door. Um, so we want these babies, there's three places that the baby can safely sleep. A crib, a bassinet, or a pack and play. Okay, just to recap, no pillows. So for every single sleep, you guys, this means nap time um, and bedtime. No pillows, blankets, toys, or pets sleeping with that baby. A firm mattress with a fitted sheet. We don't want to add any other blankets or anything in there. Um, dressing your baby in in light clothing that we talked about or a sleep sack for sleeping and making sure nothing covers the baby's head um, this includes headbands or hats okay because they can come off and they can get in the baby's face okay so nothing on the baby's head for sleep of course if you're going outside for a walk put it out on your baby if it's cold okay and then always back to sleep all right so I add this S part because it's really important. Um, babies need to be kept away from all cigarette, marijuana, and vape smoke. It's really important um, to keep your babies healthy and safe. Um, it can also increase their chance of dying from sudden infant death. Um, so we really want to keep away from that kind of stuff. So um, does anybody have any questions? Do you want to throw it up in the chat? or? Um, Oh, somebody did. What age do they stop using sleep socks? Okay, good question. That's a really good question. I should have covered that. So it's 12 months. So these recommendations, everything that we talked about are all the way through their first birthday. Okay. So that swaddle sack that you saw me using, um, we don't want to swaddle babies after eight weeks of age um, because they need their hands, right? They start rolling at eight weeks of age, so they got to have their hands up. But then that swaddle piece comes off in the small, medium, and large. Even toddlers wear um, sleep sacks. Like my grandson Roman, I think he wore his until he was like two. So they just like them. You guys know how you used to have like a special blanket? These sleep sacks kind of turn into that for them. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, be good. Wash your hands. You know, stay healthy. Okay. Bye. Bye.